The Plight of Harrison Floyd Since the death of George Floyd in protective police custody, it's impossible to believe, but in 2023, a black man can have all of his rights taken away from him. Okay, hold on. Hold on one second, uh, Mr. Floyd. So, um, I'm not taking any statements uh, from you today, all right? So, we're not dealing with that. What today is just where I advise you of your rights and advise you of the charges that have been brought against you and then talk to you about uh, the, um, your right to counsel and your appointment of counsel, okay? Um, are you aware of the charges that have been brought against you in this indictment? Uh, yes, ma'am. The DA's office pulled me aside yesterday when they didn't Mirandize me and tried to talk about something. Okay. I'm assuming that's what you're referring to. Okay. I'm referring to the indictment where you have been charged in count one with violation of the Georgia RICO Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act as well as in counts 30 and 31, which is for conspiracy to commit solicitation of false statements and writings and influencing witnesses. So those are the charges that have been brought against you in this indictment. Do you understand that? Uh, yes, ma'am. I believe those are the same ones that the DA's office called and threatened and coerced my uh, in-laws with trying to get me out here. I think those are the same ones. All right. Thank you, Mr. Floyd. Um, your case has been assigned to Judge Scott McAfee. All right. He's going to be the judge who is assigned to your case, who's going to be handling it uh, from this point forward. I am just handling this first appearance hearing today because I am filling in for the presiding judge. All right? Okay. Um, at this point, I will hear from the state. Mr. Floyd, um, let's see, have you uh, retained a lawyer? Okay, so you have spoken with someone from the public defender's office and you uh, were told that you do not qualify, is that correct? Not representation, yes, that's correct. Okay, all right, so Mr. Floyd, you have the right to then hire a lawyer of your choice, or of course you're always welcome to proceed pro se. But because you do not qualify for a public defender, you have the right to retain a lawyer of your choice. Okay? Uh, The cost is typically between $40,000 to $100,000 just to retain a lawyer for these charges. And then they charge an hourly that I cannot afford. I'm not going to put my family in that kind of debt, um, especially with my daughter. I, can't, I cannot afford an attorney for something like this. Okay. Well, Scott McAfee, uh, Judge McAfee will go through the process if you choose to represent yourself. So according to this smug Georgia judge. Harrison Floyd should have sold his house, sold all of his possessions, because what he's been punished with for the crime of voting Republican and of attempting to induce other blacks to vote Republican, he's going to be thrown in jail. He is in jail until they bother getting around to his piddling little trial, which is incredibly insignificant compared to Donald Trump's trial in Georgia. Pre-trial services, can you give me um, any information about Mr. Floyd's criminal history? Yes, ma'am. I have one prior. It was from May 15th, 2023. It's a Maryland FBI. It was a simple assault. A simple assault on a federal officer. And it was given some bail supervision for five years on charge of simple assault misdemeanor. Nothing further. That's, that's still an open case, Your Honor. That's not it. It's not. I do not have a criminal record. I understand, Mr. Floyd. Thank you. I understand that it's just charges against you. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay, Mr. Floyd, um, the issue of bond is not going to be addressed today. Uh, that's going to be addressed uh, by Judge McAfee, who's assigned to your case. Uh, so, but to the extent uh, that you are, you're here in front of a judge, I do find that uh, based on the open charge against you, uh, there are grounds for bond to be denied.
at this point. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and find that you are a risk to commit additional felonies and a potential risk to flee the jurisdiction. So I'm going to deny bond, but a full consideration of bond will be uh, addressed by Judge McAfee as your case moves forward. Do you understand? Yes, I'm the so the charges again brought against me by the federal government were first presented to the state by the FBI. The state decided to not prosecute on the day they decided not to prosecute. The U.S. attorney in the state of Maryland notified my attorney that they would take up the charges. This charge is a simple misdemeanor, ma'am. This is very bad. He's just realized that this is all a setup. He has been set up to have no attorney, to be told he's too rich to have an attorney, and he's going to sit in this filthy Georgia jail, possibly getting shanked and murdered, waiting for his insignificant trial to even start. This man has had all of his rights taken away from him, and I'd like to see the details of just exactly how they served this summons to him in the state of Maryland back in May of the same year. I got on a plane, I voluntarily came here, I am already on federal pretrial supervision. I've had no issues with being on pretrial supervision. There's no way that I'm a flight risk, ma'am. I showed up before the president was here. Okay. I understand, Mr. Floyd. Um, the issue of bond is not going to be decided by me. It's going to be assigned to, decided by the judge who is assigned to handle your case, okay? This is just a first appearance hearing uh, for a case that's already been indicted. So I was just letting you know that it's it's not, we're not going to have a bond hearing today, um, but, but to the extent that you are before a judge, I'm telling you that bond is not going to be issued today. All right? Then when will that next hearing be, ma'am? That, that'll be up to Judge McAfee. He can't believe what he's hearing. A black man in 2023 has no rights if he does not vote for the Democratic Party. All right, Judge McAfee is going to be the one who is handling your case. This is just your first appearance hearing to notify you of your rights and notify you of the charges that have been brought against you. Yes, ma'am, I understand. Okay. All right, well, that's all we're doing today, Mr. Floyd. And this judge, and maybe I'm reading too much in her tone of voice, she can't contain her glee. She's going to get someone who works for Donald Trump. She's going to destroy his life and keep him in jail until they even bother getting around to his pathetic little trial. After this, it sounds like she's going to pop open a bottle of wine and champagne and toast all of her Democratic Party friends on how they screwed this pathetic little black man and crushed his life possibly ending his life, depending on how long he stays in this Georgia jail. This is one happy judge, and that is no exaggeration. Now, what is it that this man is deemed, not only by this judge, to be a danger of committing additional felonies, but also a danger of a flight risk, even though he flew willingly to Georgia to answer for this political indictment? Let's go take a look at the other felony he was charged with. Let's read a little bit about this man and his plight. First, let's go back to June 2019. Georgia 7th District. Floyd drops out of race, urges another Republican to run. Republican candidate Harrison Floyd dropped out of the race Tuesday. June 2019, for Georgia's 7th District, less than a month after launching his campaign. So this man is a political candidate, and we have a judge who looks at his political career and says, I think you're going to commit additional felonies. Does that sound right to you? Does that sound fair? Let's see what he was charged with in Maryland. Take a look here. You search the Baltimore Sun for Black Voices for Trump. They don't have any news stories on this guy. This guy got a complete blackout from any sympathetic reporter in the state of Maryland. A Trump supporter indicted in Georgia is also charged with assaulting an agent in Maryland. By Russ Bynum Associated Press, August 24th. 
Harrison Floyd turned himself in to the Fulton County Jail in Atlanta a week after being indicted in the Georgia case. And they claim he assaulted an FBI agent in Maryland. Look at what happened. He was arrested three months ago in Maryland on a federal warrant that accused him of aggressively confronting two FBI agents sent to serve him with a grand jury subpoena. An agent's affidavit filed in U.S. District Court said Floyd screamed, cursed, and jabbed a finger in one FBI agent's face. This is a man who was with his daughter, and he was aggressively being served summons for what he could clearly identify was a political indictment. Floyd knew what was going on. These agents knew what was going on. A black man was being set up. The records don't disclose the purpose of the grand jury seeking Floyd's testimony. Well, how convenient. This man is sitting in a jail, and he's told by this judge he's too rich to have an attorney appointed for him, which, we, as Americans, we all thought was our basic right. Not anymore. This black man has had all of his rights taken away for the crime of being a Republican candidate, for the crime of voting Republican, and for the crime of attempting to induce other African Americans to vote Republican. Listen, you got to come see us when you come to New York, VP Biden. Cause I a, will. It's a long way until November. We got more questions. You got more okay. questions. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. This is America in 2023. And this is the justice system that has put the 45th president himself on trial. When you think of all of the injustice surrounding the 2020 presidential election, think of this man, Harrison Floyd, and ask yourself why there are smug judges sitting in judgment of this man for the crime of his conscience. Thank you.